Hi, and welcome to the second session on failure to function adequately. In this session, we'll have a look at the evaluation of the failure to function adequately definition of abnormality and put your evaluation to the test. So to start with, read the statement below and consider how much you agree or disagree with it. So pause the video for two minutes while you have a think, jot your answers down and perhaps try and chat about it to someone else as well. Now you may have had some different thoughts, since this definition does give us criteria, but it isn't really clear on what the cutoffs for that criteria are, and this is largely to do with the issue of objectivity. Now objectivity is one of the key features of science that you'll need to be familiar with, and it refers to the removal of bias, the removal of personal opinions or people's interpretations, and as a result, this increases the accuracy or validity of judgments that are made. So for this next task, decide if you would consider failure to function adequately to be an objective definition of abnormality or not. So using the criteria above, pause the video for two minutes while you have a think and make your own decision. Now, one thing that may affect your decision about objectivity is observer discomfort. So for this task, let's revisit what it means and suggest specific reasons why this isn't an objective way of defining abnormality. So pause the video here for 10 minutes while you write your summary and then suggest reasons why it's not objective. So you can see for number one, we've got an outline of observer discomfort. And if you want to jot that down or compare it to yours in more detail, then you can pause the video again. But one reason why this is not objective is that people, in other words, the observers, have different tolerance levels for behaviours. For example, someone may not be affected by too much eye contact, whereas someone else might be very uncomfortable. So where there's personal differences in discomfort, we're arguing here that it's not a great way of, of determining who is and who is not abnormal. Okay, so the next task, let's do the same again, but this time let's have a look at personal distress. So write a summary of what this means, so referring back to earlier learning, and this is a really good habit to get into, to keep trying to recall earlier learning so that it's there at the forefront and we can recall it quite quickly in the exam. And then suggest reasons why this may not be a good way to identify failure to function. So pause the video for another 10 minutes while you answer these two questions. And some more suggested answers are available now. So it refers to the amount of distress a person is experiencing in response to their behaviour, thoughts or situation. For example, someone may experience high levels of distress if they go outside in public. And this may not be a good way to identify failure to function, since there's many people who are not likely to experience distress, yet would still be regarded as abnormal. For example, someone with auditory hallucinations. And for anyone who might study forensics, you've also come across lots of criminals who commit some atrocious acts, but don't feel distress about it. And so distress, therefore, is not the greatest determinant factor of abnormality. All right, so another task then. We've got three stories, three scenarios, three people on the screen. Read the descriptions below and put them in order of functioning, from most functioning to least functioning. And this is where we start to introduce your AO2 application skills and really assess your underpinning knowledge of failure to function adequately. So pause the video for five minutes while you make your decisions. Now, I'm sure there's lots of things to consider and comment on, but Gemma would probably function best since despite being anxious, she does still manage to go to work. Followed by Amir. Amir is the next best functioning, although I think it's clear that he isn't functioning very well with the checking compulsion affecting his employment. And then Scotty is the potential danger to himself or others, so he would have significantly poorer functioning and he'd also score the lowest on the GAF scale as well.